Good morning, I'm Dr. Nicholas Jones with Nip and Tuck Plastic Surgery, and it is the month of October, and we are celebrating breast cancer awareness. And as a result of that, we are participating in the American Cancer Society Walk, and we would love if you would, could, could join us or make a donation to support a great cause. So we are all affected by breast cancer in some form or fashion. Either we have a family member, a friend, coworker, or we've personally been affected. And so what I basically want to do first is just give you a few statistics. So in 2020, there were over 2.3 million new diagnoses of breast cancer. You may or may not know this, but breast cancer is the most common type of cancer affecting women globally. Uh, here in the United States, it's only number two, second to skin cancer. In a lifetime uh, risk, uh, women are, one out of every eight women will develop breast cancer, and that's about 13% of the population. So while breast cancer may be common amongst women, uh, men also can be affected by breast cancer, however, the incidence is much lower. One of the keys uh, of surviving from breast cancer is early detection. And there's been a multitude of studies that show that early detection and treatment increases your survivorship. So how do we detect breast cancer? Well, first and foremost, you can start with self-exams at home. So basically, you want to uh, fill your breasts, uh, make sure you don't have any masses or lumps or new masses or lumps. And as far as the x-ray, there's a, there's a study called the mammogram, which is an x-ray. And basically, it's a radiographic image uh, that checks the density of the breast, looks for calcifications and masses, uh, which a radiologist uh, reviews. Uh, typically, uh, the recommendation is to start getting screening mammograms at 40. However, if you have risk factors or you have family members um, that had an early uh, breast cancer, it may be necessary for you to get it at an earlier age. Uh, in addition to a mammogram, ultrasound is also used. And what's so important about the mammogram is to get, get it yearly because basically the radiologist can have a reference point. So if there's any changes from year to year, it will be it will be much easier for the radiologist to detect. What happens if you are affected by breast cancer? Um, there are many different treatment modalities. Uh, some include uh, excisional procedure along with chemotherapy and some patients require radiation. Um, so once you are treated for your breast cancer, uh, there is a federal mandate, a federal law. Uh, if your insurance provides coverage for the treatment of the, the cancer or removal excision, they are by law required to offer or pay for your breast reconstruction. And so when it comes to breast reconstruction, there are many different options and there are many ways in which it can be done. So there's immediate breast reconstruction in which you have your cancer uh, treatment operation and have a reconstruction at that same time, and then there's also delayed. A lot of times it may be delayed because patients have larger uh, tumors and they need it to be radiated just to ensure that the cancer has been uh, properly treated. Uh, as far as your reconstructive options, uh, probably the, the most common is implant-based reconstruction, where implant is placed under the muscle or in a subcutaneous space to uh, reconstruct the breasts. There are other options which include fat grafting. Um, there is muscle transfers where we can take uh, your latissimus muscle along with some skin to recreate the breasts and you can use that with or without an implant. And then there's free tissue transfer where we take tissue from various parts of your body and using a microscope, sitting on the microscope, sew very small blood vessels together and recreate the breast. That is called uh, free flap or microsurgery. And some people, some patients just choose not to have reconstruction 
but it is just really important for you to know that there are options out there for you. Once again, I'm Dr. Nicholas Jones, Nip and Tuck Plastic Surgery. If you have any ideas, any suggestions, uh, please comment uh, at the bottom on our YouTube channel and we'd love to, you know, give you more information about things that matter to you.